I did not recall this character in the movies until I searched him up. And actually, I don't recall a lot of things from The Phantom Menace, it turns out. I think the reason is that it's a forgettable movie. It would be forgotten if Star Wars wouldn't be plastered in front of it. I don't know, I only remember the pod race scene, the final duel between Darth Maul and the Jedi, and Jar Jar. Of course, who could forget that face? I chose Captain Panaka over the other blaster characters thus far because he was the first character you play with dodge and auto-aim. When I played him in the Escape from Naboo level, it was like a new revelation to me. He was so good compared to Queen Amidala, who was in the level with him at the time. Queen Amidala sucks if you don't know already, I think I, I already expressed this in a part earlier to this, she's, she's terrible. They shouldn't have bothered giving her a weapon. They should have just pulled a Chancellor Palpatine and made her run around without a blaster. Panaka looks like the Royal Guard though, just with a different skin tone and different colors on his uniform, so I really can't take him seriously. We're slowly making the transition into the characters you would want to play as in this game. Which is a relief since I've spent so many episodes in the series bashing the useless characters. Really, it's getting old. Technically, the bad characters ended with the Blaster Lukes, but come on, why would you play as a Blaster Luke when you can play as a Jedi Luke? Anyway, I'm at the Landos now. There are only two versions of Lando in this game, which would make sense. He was only in one and a half movies as a side character. The Palace Disguise is the less iconic version, so there you go. Lando also has auto dodge, which is great, and yeah. And of course, the other Lando is the one in his classic outfit, and although he stabbed Han and the gang in the back, I still like the guy for the most part. He makes it up to him in Return of the Jedi anyway, so. Lando is going to show up in the Han Solo anthology film, right? I'd be surprised if he didn't, to be honest. They have history and fans want to know what that history is. I'm not sure if the Boba Fett film is still in the works, but if it is, I'm still a bit iffy about that. I, I'd much rather prefer uh, uh, an Obi-Wan solo film starring Ewan McGregor that takes place after the events of Order 66, but hey, that's just me. My main point in this segment is supposed to be that Lando is a pretty good character to play like fairly good. And now we're moving on to the Han Solos. Most of the rest of this episode is going to be about Han, so get ready for me running out of things to talk about. The Stormtrooper Han is just like the Stormtrooper Luke in the sense that they both are the least interesting versions of their respective characters. I have nothing against Stormtrooper Han, but he's just not as important compared to the other Hans. By the way, Han finally got a new hairpiece in the new LEGO Death Star by the way, if you didn't know. For all the years that LEGO Star Wars existed, Han had the same generic brown hairpiece. They never changed it because they are either too lazy or they'd have to change the Han Solo and Carbonite mold to match the hairpiece. But they finally changed his hair to something more accurate. But I'm still not going to spend $500 on the new Death Star set only for the new Han though because he'll probably show up in a cheaper set in a few months from now. The Endor Han Solo, like the Stormtrooper version, is in no way different from any other Han, so I'm going to get straight to the time filling. In this segment, I'm going to be talking about the prologue level in LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. The prologue in that game are the Endor battles. The last three levels in LEGO The Complete Saga is the battle on Endor, the fight between Luke and Vader and Palpatine, and the destruction of the de second Death Star. The prologue level in the LEGO Force Awakens takes all of those and puts it into one. Now I know the prologue level in the game only exists because they need to fill up levels since this game technically only adapts one version, but the prologue level is a very good level and it like pulled me into the game immediately and just overall to be honest the levels in lego the force awakens are better than the complete saga which i mean a lot of people wouldn't, wouldn't expect that from a game that stretches one movie out into like 10 levels plus like a bunch of six 
or about six bonus levels. So, like, yeah, a lot of people won't expect that, but I actually like the uh, Lego Force Awakens more than the complete saga. As I said with the others, the Hoth Han Solo isn't special compared to any other Han Solo. To be honest, there's one, maybe two, versions of Han that stand out. And I'll get to them later in this episode. So you may be asking, how will I fill time this time? Well, I'm going to be talking about the Hoth UCS set. UCS stands for Ultimate Collector Series. You expect it to be cool, right? Wrong. The Hoth UCS set freaking sucks, dude. It seems like a giant playset made for kids. A real UCS set would probably be like the Slave 1 UCS set. Um, that set is huge, but it's uh, a little too big to be honest. Like, it doesn't look like it's too scale with the minifigures. I mean, just look at it. It's, it's too big. It's too big. Anyway, the Hoff UCS set should not, should not be called UCS. It's not worthy. UCS is made for the older fans who want a challenge, but this is just seems like a bunch of crap from different sets from over the years and just compiled it into one and marked it as like 250 bucks. It's not, mm, I'm not gonna buy it. I mean, I don't, I don't own a UCS set, but if I were to start, I would not start with this one. I just would not, just would not. So this is the Han that was blind. They didn't portray him as being blind in this game, probably because it was too much work. They probably would add it in if they remade the game, remaking, re they remake the game. Hint, cough, 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 remake, please. But this is also the Han that took Boba Fett out while blind. At least in this game, they made Boba Fett a boss fight before you take him out. But that death in the movie was the most anticlimactic death ever. To this day, I do not see why fanboys worship him. And yes, I know he survived by burning inside the Sarlacc or something to that extent. But that was the expanded universe. Which I talk, I, if you don't know what that is, I talked about in the last part. I explained it there, so go check it out if you haven't. Which, I mean, why would you be watching this if you can't Whatever. And yes, George Lucas did say in an interview that Fett could have survived the Sarlacc in the official continuity. But when was the last time George Lucas did something good with Star Wars? I may have gone too far in a few places. The point is, Boba Fett shouldn't be worshipped because he was taken out by a blind Han, Han Solo. Like, come on, guys. The second best Han Solo in this game, in my opinion, is the OG Han himself. This is the version you come across in the most Eisley Spaceport level, which is the first time you see him ever. I'm assuming we've all seen The Force Awakens at this point, so I don't have to hide it. Han dies. There you go. I was unhappy about it, but I knew it was going to happen mostly because Harrison Ford wanted his character to die in Return of the Jedi, also because of people on the internet. But Hey, you know, whatever. The scene between Kylo Ren and Han was Oscar worthy though. Like, I was not expecting that scene to be so touchy. That sounds really dumb, but I mean it. And finally, the last Han Solo on this list. This is the only Han Solo you don't get in story mode. You have to buy him from the store. And, and as you can probably tell, this is the Han that saved Luke by stepping him into a dead Tauntaun. I already expressed in the uh, previous part that the Wampa scene and this scene were one of the most impactful Star Wars scenes to me personally, but you know, I said that already, so I'm going to be talking about May 4th. What about May 4th? Well, it, that is Star Wars Day, and LEGO stores usually give an exclusive minifigure on that day. What does that have to do with Hooded Han? Well, he was an exclusive minifigure for one of those years. The exclusive minifigures have decreased in quality over the, over the years. Uh, the Hooded Han was the minifigure for 2013's May 4th, and he was lackluster. But Darth Revan followed him as the 2014 May 4th minifigure. I unfortunately missed out on that. 
but they re-released him as a promotion for any Star Wars purchase for this year's Force Friday, so I have him now. He was the only reason why I even participated, to be honest. And now we move on to m most of the bounty hunters. And we're going to end it off with the bounty hunters so I can, with one bounty hunter so I can like leave you up on a cliffhanger. I mean, that wasn't initially planned. They just kind of fell into one place. But I'm going to count it as a cliffhanger, all right? And we're starting with the Zam Wessel. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, she was the one Jango Fett killed, right? I try my best to push most, if not all memories of Attack of the Clones out of my head. Bounty Hunters have their own special features that no other character can do. They have bombs. There are silver objects throughout the entire game and you think to yourself, how do I take care of these? What do I do? And then you get to the Jabba's Palace level and then you use bombs when Leia is in a Bounty Hunter disguise. So, and then you find out that. So yeah, bounty hunters are pretty useful. Zam Wessel is like the worst one, you know. Some bounty hunters can do more than just shoot blasters and throw bombs. Like, about half of them can do more than uh, shoot blasters and throw bombs, you know. But Zam, is, uh, Zam Wessel is not one of those characters. She's a throwaway character. I mean, she died. What a show me. She freaking died in the first act of Attack of the Clones. If that's not a throwaway character, I don't know what is. So needless to say, I don't really care for her. I don't think anyone did. She's very lame. And I need to end the video right here because I am tired. I am recording this at like 11 o'clock at night. Okay? Okay, good. <laughs>